all of this is is uh, strengthening uh, him in the Republican primary. We've run this experiment. Uh, you know, he's only gained since he started getting indicted. Uh, you know, what you thought might be kryptonite for him has turned out to be battery packs. And this is a big one uh, for him. Uh, presumably, the Supreme Court will deal with it uh, fairly quickly. And I expect that they will leave him on the ballot. And yes, uh, Brianna, I, I, I have very, very strong reservations about all of this. I do think it would rip the country apart if he were uh, actually prevented from running, because tens of millions of people uh, want to vote for him. I think if you're going to beat Donald Trump, you're going to probably have to do it at the polls. All right, guys, so we got to react to the cackling hens on The View. And boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. It's been a long time since I have done a video on the cackling hens. But the cackling hens are back, okay? The news cycle is back in full swing, and they are catching up on old news and reacting to Trump being removed from the ballot in states like Colorado and Maine. And I want to react to this segment from The View because this segment shows you just how dumb <laughs> some of these cackling hens are. Uh, mainly Joy Behar, who clearly is the dumbest of the cackling hens. As I want to talk about her reaction to a reality check that was being given to the Trump deranged hens on The View. About how removing Trump from the ballot could possibly backfire. Because up until now, everything that they've thrown at Trump has not worked, right? It's only made Trump stronger, and you can only assume and guess <laughs> that uh, removing Trump from the ballot is going to make him even more stronger, right? But this is something that Joy Behar clearly can't comprehend, right? And it's just hilarious to watch her slowly realize that, oh, wait, this may backfire based off what Sarah Haynes is arguing on the show, which is that, yeah, um... This right here, uh, in regards to Trump being removed from the ballot, basically validates all of Trump's claims in regards to the election not being fair and how everything is rigged against him. So I want to react to it. So without further ado, let's get into it. AR-15. Yeah. But what I would say well, here Scalia is... Scalia did that. Yeah. But personally, I think he definitely engaged in an insurrection, um, and I look forward to him being convicted, rightly so. But I Okay. <laughs> convicted of what? He hasn't been charged with anything related to an act of insurrection, right? Nor has anybody that uh, was involved with January 6th, okay? Nobody has been charged with an act of insurrection. So there's nothing to convict him over, okay? Because he hasn't been criminally charged with an act of insurrection. Again, it's just, it's amazing, right? These, these people literally think that their opinions, their opinions should dictate the law, right? We believe he committed an insurrection, therefore he's guilty and he should be convicted, even though he hasn't been charged with anything related to an act of insurrection. Again, amazing. I think even more so, the language says if you aid and comfort mm -hmm. insurrectionists. And from yes. the day he came out of the White House, he said, we love you, go home. That's such he a then, great point. Yeah, he, and he then he also, them. yep. No, it's not a great point because <laughs> nobody's been charged with an act of insurrection, okay? Not Trump or anybody that uh, was there on January 6th has been charged. So how can you say he aided and abetted insurrectionists when nobody has even been formally accused of being an insurrectionist, right, uh, in criminal court, uh, and nobody's been convicted? So again, it's just so funny how these people, okay, they want their opinions to essentially be convictions, right? They want to say, well, we think he's an insurrectionist. We think that January 6th was an insurrection. Therefore, he's guilty, okay? He's been convicted in the court of public opinion, and he needs to be locked up, thrown in jail, and taken off the ballots for it, right? This is what these people believe. However, again, what they also know is that this could backfire on them, okay? And this is what they're about to get into is how this could backfire. And then in the video when he, um, Good he also said on both sides. he would pardon the j No, no, this is specific to yeah. the insurrection. Oh, yeah. Listen to this dummy, right? Listen to this dummy, uh, Joy Behar. Good people on both sides, right? Again, this is what happens when your brain is on MSNBC talking points, right? When you're not actually critically thinking, right? When you just say things because you've been taught that, oh, I just need to say that phrase. <laughs> Good people on both sides. It's like, well, Joy, that's not the topic at hand here, right? That's a whole totally different situation. That, by the way, is also... A BS from the mainstream liberal media, the good people on both sides narrative from Charlottesville 
Yeah, that's also BS from the media. But again, this is how much of an NPC Joy Behar is. Right? She just says the magic words. Okay? She, just, she has no clue what they're talking about. She doesn't know anything at all. She just knows that, oh, well, it, I feel like I should say one of the catchphrases, right? I should say one of the things, right? Like, good people on both sides, right? And like, no, no, Joy. They're not talking about that right now. They're not talking about that. Again, it's amazing. I don't understand how these people get paid millions of dollars to talk about politics. It really blows my mind. Again, in a country where these people claim that it's so, um, you know, systemically racist or uh, there is systemic sexism against women. Um, if all that was true, there's no way that these dummies would be able to have a show and get paid millions of dollars, right? The fact that these women have a show uh, and they get paid millions of dollars to talk about politics, something they clearly know nothing about. Again, it just shows you uh, the privilege, who really has the real privilege in this country. He said he would pardon the insurrectionists. He listened to their album right. from prison yeah. Yeah. because I guess it was a thing. So I think that, but the point I would say here is that I actually agree with Governor Gavin Newsom and David Axelrod. These are Democrats, leading Democrats that say this would really cause a division that's almost insurmountable. And as someone that believes January so 6th was I, that bad, so wait one what, second. So what are you saying? Wait, just one second. I don't think, <laughs> one, I don't think the Supreme Court's going to hold this. I think they're going to overturn it, and it won't just be the originalists. I bet it's a 9-0 vote. I actually don't think they will hold this. So you but think, I think they the should leave it to the voters or I, not? I think they should leave it to the voters. Oh, but I no. think the... I think the oh, no, don't leave it to the voters, right? You heard that? She said, do you think they should leave it to the voters? She says, yeah, I think they should leave it to the voters. And she's explaining why they should leave it to the voters. And the reason why she's saying that is because it will backfire, right? If, if this is something where the Supreme Court decides to bar Trump from the ballot, it will backfire big time, right? It will backfire big time, okay? Uh, first thing Joy Behar says is, oh, no, <laughs> right? The same people that scream about democracy, 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 they're triggered by the idea that, People actually get to decide who they want to be their leader based off voting, right? Ain't it amazing how that works? Oh, no. The people get to choose whether or not Trump should be able to be president. <laughs> Again, these are the same people that will kick and scream and whine about democracy all day. But it's like I tell you guys, when they say my democracy, protect our democracy, they really mean protect our dictatorship, right? That's exactly what they mean here vision this will cause because what will happen is that martyrdom will be one step more we have a nation well, that doesn't believe in yeah. in democracy doesn't believe in the voting everyone that loses says it was rigged and failed i think this will create a vision a visual to people that don't that this was a rigged no, election i don't by doing, i do i think that the law will stand and so people I'm very, should follow the law if that is if the law listen, the supreme court if you're not going to follow conflicted. an amendment then why don't we have taylor swift but i take a different i think it's as clear follow the amendment right that's how simple-minded she is Okay, well, you follow the amendment. Anybody that you accuse of being an insurrectionist, right, they should just be removed from the ballot, right, according to Joy Behar's logic. Because, again, there are no criminal charges. There's no convictions to justify removing somebody from the ballot based off the 14th Amendment. Uh, but, again, in Joy Behar's world, because she believes that Trump committed an act of insurrection, therefore, he should just be removed, right? But, again, Joy Behar here does not understand that Sarah Haynes is actually making a pretty, um, I would say, ballot point, okay, in regards to how, yeah, if Trump being removed from ballots actually upholds, yes, it's going to drive the country into a divide that will not be able to be healed, right? That, that would probably be a civil war scenario, and it will basically prove and validate Trump's claims, right? They'll say, look, this is an act from the deep state, right? These people are removing me from the ballot. They're not allowing me to win fair and square, you're seeing they're doing it right in front of your face, okay? This is what they're doing. I mean, <laughs> look at Florida, North Carolina, Tennessee with the Democrats, the DNC. They're not allowing anybody on the ballot to compete against Joe Biden. It will be proof and evidence, okay, in the minds of a lot of people in this country that, yeah, it's rigged, right? And that's the point that Sarah Haynes is making, which she's right about that, right? That is the way that people will see it, okay? And it will validate everything that Trump says, and that's why his poll numbers are going up. His poll numbers are going up because people are saying that, oh, wait, they actually are coming after this guy. Like, they're not letting him win fair and square. All these claims and things that Trump was saying before might be true, right? It actually makes the things he say more credible the more that they attack him, the more that they come after him, especially when they do stuff like this because they're like, oh, yeah, these people are definitely trying to affect the outcome of the election. They're doing it right in front of their face, right?
But again, Joy Behar, because she doesn't have too many brain cells left to rub together, uh, she can't understand this point, right? She's so Trump deranged that, again, she's upset by the idea that people <laughs> should be allowed to vote for who they want in office, right? They should have a say. But again, this is what I try to tell you guys. These elitists, they don't believe you should have a say. They believe in the illusion of democracy, but they don't believe in actual democracy. They don't, they don't believe that people should have a choice, okay? They don't. They're totally fine with the game being rigged, 100%. This is why they say nothing about what the DNC is doing uh, in the Democrat primary. This is why they're silent about it. They, they, they have nothing to say, crickets, right? When you got, again, Democrat candidates being left off ballots, okay, for no reason outside of the fact that they don't want Joe Biden to have competition. They don't want a real, want a real primary. And again, nobody's talking about it. Nobody in mainstream liberal media is talking about it. They're ignoring it. While at the same time, uh, screaming about my democracy, right? Pretending like they're democracy crusaders. Perspective than the yes. martyrdom. I'm very conflicted on this as a conservative because I tend toward being more of an originalist. I worry about two things. When we look at the law, you think of the precedent that it sets. So say that this ends up holding. Donald Trump becomes, if he, God forbid, becomes mm -hmm. president about this time next mm -hmm. year, he could weaponize that same yeah. ruling to yeah. keep Democrats off the ballot. In the same way that he says, Joe Biden is a threat to democracy, yep. he's going to say, this Democrat engaged in insurrection. This is what I mean. It's going to be a slippery ballot. slope. So, so then, so then we are operating from a place of if, there, if he has secretaries of state or he has a, appointed judges that he appoint who are loyal to him, they will weaponize the same decision. And one more thing. Yeah. I'm democracy, pretty sure the Democrats aren't going to start a January 6th but it insurrection. But the problem is... It'll yeah, but see, they have, right? They have started plenty of things that I could define as an insurrection, okay? If we're using the term and the definition as loosely as Democrats have used it, okay? Based off precedents that Democrats have set... I can define what Rashida Tlaib did leading the mob of pro-Palestinian rioters into Congress as an insurrection, right? She should have been removed from Congress for doing that, right? I can define what Jamal Bowman did pulling the fire alarm to obstruct an official proceeding as an act of insurrection, okay? I can define a lot of things that Democrats do as an act of insurrection, okay, if you really want to go there. Because again, you're now loosening up the definition to the point where I could just apply it to whoever, you know, creates any type of, you know, protest, okay, or riot that takes place near the Capitol where they disagree with what the government's doing. That is what the, the definition has become now. So Alyssa Fair Griffin, Griffin, who is Trump deranged, is actually, again, making a good point in the sense that, yeah, it could backfire because Trump could get in office and then he could use the same definition that Democrats are using and saying, yeah. You're a threat to democracy, you're a threat to democracy, you're insurrectionists, you're insurrectionists. And look, you can't really push back against them because Democrats have set the precedent that, yeah, based off my opinion, I could just call anybody insurrectionists. And here's the thing, I don't even think he had to do that. Because you know what's going to happen? If Trump is elected president this year, if he wins, Democrats are going to basically uh, protest, they're going to riot, they're going to essentially have their own version of January 6th. That's what I believe, right? Just based off the... Actions that we've seen for these people in the past, like, for example, when the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, these people went to the Capitol and staged what I can define as an insurrection against the Supreme Court, right? This is what they did. So, again, imagine what they do if Trump is elected again. They'll result to violence. They'll be protesting at the Capitol. And then Trump can say, look, this is an insurrection. Democrats shouldn't be allowed on the ballot, right? Anybody that supports it. All the Democrats that came out here and started talking about, oh, you know, the election wasn't fair because you know that's what they'll do, right? If Trump wins, 100% they'll come out here and claim the election wasn't fair and they'll be challenging it in Congress and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, they'll argue that, oh, well, yeah, the, the VP does have the right to send the election back to the states, okay? They'll, they'll be making these arguments that they claim wasn't possible to do, okay, when it came to Mike Pence. All of a sudden, they'll do a U-turn. That's exactly what's going to happen, right? And based off precedents that Democrats set, Trump can say, yeah, you're, you're insurrectionist, you're a threat to democracy, you're not eligible. So, you know, again, rare, rare, rare situation here where you have the uh, cackling hens, or at least a few of the cackling hens, actually making some good points about how this could backfire in the sense that, yeah, Democrats have set precedents that can and will be used against them. Right. And it's just so funny to me how these people, you don't think that Democrats can have their own version of January 6th when these people have shown uh, that they're the most violent people 
uh, in the country, right? The BLM riots, the Antifa riots, the Roe v. Wade riots. These people are violent as hell. So best believe if Trump is elected again, um, likely you're going to see some violence from that side of the political aisle. But again, the point is that you're setting a precedent that is going to be used against you in the future. And all of this witch hunt against Trump is backfiring because his poll numbers continue to go up and up and up and up and up. And you only have a few of the cackle hands that can actually understand and grasp what's happening. And then you got the ones like Sonny Holston and Joy Behar. They're just completely lost, right? They're completely lost in the sauce. They don't understand a damn thing, right? Because their Trump derangement has clouded their ability to critically think, right? I'm, again, I'm not sure how in the world are these people getting paid millions of dollars to discuss politics in 2024. But hey, this is the country that we're living in. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share. A black conservative perspective. Peace.